I would like to thank the International Movement for Peace and Coexistence for this initiative and uh, for moderating, moderating this important event. Also, I extend my thanks to my colleagues for hosting and co-hosting the event in the European Parliament. The fact that this event is supported by MEPs from different political groups of the European Parliament does not necessarily mean that we agree in all aspects and in all, and in all subject matters, but we agree in one thing. We agree on the fundamental values of the European Union and that we are all against uh, radicalization and extremism because we are united by common values. So it's rather uh, constructive to talk and discuss how to face and stop and terminate um, extremism and radicalization. I want to start with uh, a very uh, essential statement. Any form of extremism and terrorism is an attack on the core values of the European Union, such as democracy, the rule of law, respect for fundamental rights and unity in diversity, and it is also a threat to security, peace and stability, and prosperity of the European integration to its, uh, towards uh, our citizens. Secondly, though, perhaps more important, those acts are criminal acts, and global terror networks are akin to international organized crime. Although responsibility for combating crime and safeguarding security primarily lies with the member states, the terrorist attacks of recent years have shown that this is also a common European responsibility. In this, the EU's role is vital, acting as the main forum for cooperation and coordination at the European level, but also, if possible, to a global level. As part of this effort to fight terrorism, the European Union established in 2001, by the way, a list of terrorist persons, groups, and entities involving terrorist acts and subject to restrictive uh, measures. <coughs> the list includes persons and groups active both within and outside the EU. Um, I don't want to mention some of the names because perhaps many of them are well known, such as uh, Daesh, uh, Islamic State, Al-Qaeda, and so on. Except from the political leverage of this list, groups and entities on the list are subject in the freezing to the freezing of their funds and other financial assets in the EU. It is also prohibited for EU operators to make funds and economic resources available to them. Now, in my today's short intervention, I would like to focus on one specific extreme criminal ultranationalist organization with a long history of violence and murders, especially against minorities, both in and outside of Turkey, and that is the Grey Wolves. The Grey Wolves has operated for decades as a paramilitary faction within Turkey against other ethnic minorities, such as Kurds, Armenians, Greeks, Assyrians, and others. Given that all except the Kurds have been essentially extinguished by ethnic cleansing within Turkey, the bloody iron of the Grey Wolves is targeting mainly the Kurds now and any remnants of the once large and prosperous ethnic minorities. The last few years, <coughs> there is an alliance of the ultranationalist with the Erdogan regime. In fact, there is a number of countries within EU with alarming presence of Grey Wolves, including France, Germany, Austria, Bulgaria, and Cyprus. Um, in fact, in Cyprus, uh, most of the Grey Wolves are in uh, the northern part of the Republic of Cyprus currently under Turkish occupation. But there are also activities of Grey Wolves in, uh, beyond Europe, beyond EU, in other countries and other continents. Uh, how do they operate? Well, generally, the, uh, the intelligence reports and official statements indicate that grey wolves of Turkey are operating within communities of Turkish descent in EU members under a bogus name or under some umbrella organization, 
usually with a front label indicating a welfare organization. This is done for destruction and cover-up purposes, obviously. There are official government statements within EU about the criminal activity of grey wolves. Plenty of academic and media reports as well. Also, there is plenty of unofficial information for which the victims refuse to talk publicly for obvious reasons. Also, within Turkish minorities living in Europe, such as Germany, the grey wolves are imposing terror tactics against dissidents and critics of the Erdogan regime. Many are silenced and stigmatized as traitors, terrorist supporters, threaten uh, for or actually force deportation to Turkey or impose punishment on their relatives in Turkey. Due to its actions, the Grey Wolves have been referred to the governments, scholars, and journalists as a terrorist organization, but no decision has been made yet by EU. By the way, in Cyprus, there is an arrest warrant against specific Grey Wolves members that committed two murders in 1996. One, the victim was lynched to death, and the other case was shut down, was shot to death um, on the head. Both murders were captured by many TV stations covering live demonstrations against the Turkish occupation at the time. France also decided in November 2020 to issue an official ban of grey wolves. Um, following the decision in France, I launched a petition calling for an immediate ban of grey wolves and its umbrella associations at the EU level. This petition came as a follow-up action of a letter which was sent to the uh, uh, high representative uh, in the European Union. Uh, the European Parliament, by the way, in our last report regarding Turkey, we also stated clearly that grey wolves um, uh, and their actions in Turkey, not only in Turkey, but also in EU members, uh, it's a threat uh, that makes us very concerned and worried. The European Parliament, we, as a European Parliament, we call for EU and member states to examine the possibility of banning their associations in EU countries and closely monitor their racist activities. Two last points. One, to mention, just to mention, another organization which I don't have the time and maybe this is, that can be an event on its own about this organization, it's the so-called Muslim Brotherhood that also supported by Turkey and operating in a, num in a different uh, number of countries. And finally, another form of extremism against a member state in the European Union that takes place as we talk is the instrumentalization of migration flows by Erdogan regime against Cyprus. Specifically, this is what happens. Thousands of economic migrants are lured to go to Turkey. There, on daylight time, they are embarked on airplanes and then, with their own necessary traveling papers, they are travel to the northern occupied part of Cyprus, and then all of a sudden, they lost all their traveling papers, and they asked for asylum in the government control area of Cyprus, that is, in the government control area by EU. I mean, if this is not extremism and state-supported radicalization, then what is a threat against EU? My final word, there is an urgent need in EU to react in a united way against such organizations which run counter and are detrimental to our EU values and principles. And despite our differences of opinion in this event, we are united towards what I just concluded. Once again, thank you to the organizers and also congratulations to all that unite us together against such extremism.